A single somatic cell contains plenty of information. The fundamental genetic makeup, changes that have taken place in genes over a lifetime, mutations and diseases. Cells from patients are of great interest to physicians and stem cell researchers, regardless whether they are skin cells, blood cells, or from an organ. They can all be used to research a disease or as a model for drug screening. But who has the rights to these cells? This is Niels Hoppe's main point of research. The professor of law focuses on the interaction between law, ethics, and medicine. For example, in the context of patients' informed consent to the use of their cells for research. Informed consent is uh, the attempt to ensure the greatest deal of autonomy for an individual, both in a clinical setting and a research setting. And the idea is that an individual has all the information they need to say, yes, this is something you can do with me, my material or my data. Problematic about informed consent in the research context is particularly uh, the point that very often you don't know what kind of research you're going to do with an individual. You are taking their material and their data, and then five or six years down the line, you might have a new research question that you never got consent for. There are a number of points. One of them is the interconnectedness between the cells and the individual, and that comes in a tangible and intangible flavor. As far as the tangible flavor is concerned, these cells used to be a part of a person, and should that person have some sort of control right over those cells. But there's also an intangible perspective, and that is the genetic information in these cells. The cells are data carriers, like a computer disk, uh, and it carries genetic information and genetic data. And the question is, does that data, does that information constitute a part of the personality of the patient? I personally don't think that data taken from a cell that's taken from somebody's skin is part of their personality. First of all, it's communal information. I share the vast majority of that genetic data with the rest of the human world. Uh, I share it with worms and, and other primates, and uh, I share it with my family to a huge amount. So it's communal information, it's familial information, it's not mine personally. But the question who owns cells depends very much where you are in the world. Um, if you're in Germany, it's fairly straightforward and boring, uh, and that is the German law says if cells are separated from your body, they are movable objects and they're capable of ownership, and they belong originally to the patient or the research participant, but can simply be transferred to a third party, like a researcher or a doctor. If you're in, in an Anglo-American or a common law jurisdiction, it's much more complicated than that. There's uh, well over a hundred years of jurisprudence which says that you cannot own your own body. Um, but interestingly, and this is common to all of these jurisdictions, where somebody like a researcher takes one of these cells and expends artful work and does something magic to the cell to make it into a reprogrammed cell or a cell line, then something new is created and this new thing is capable of ownership and it usually belongs to those who have expended artful work or their employers. Ultimately, the patient's best interests are paramount. That's why it is vital to support basic research and clinical studies as much as possible.